Come into the midst of these your people, Lord, and let us know that we have been in thy presence. Oh, be with us, Lord, as we endeavor to worship you in spirit and in truth. And now, Lord, be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us as only you can do it. For these and all of the blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Certainly we're thankful to be in the house of worship once again. And for all of you who are with us today, for those of you who are watching via live stream, certainly we're eternally grateful for all that God has done for us. For truly he has been uh, good to us and we're thankful for that. This time we're going to ask that our choir will come and give us an open selection. We're going to ask Deacon Holmes if he will prepare himself for our morning prayer.
letter, right? <clears throat> Holy, loving, mercy. Yes. yes. Everlasting Father. Yes. We come this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you glory. And Father, we give you all the thanks. Yes. We thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us. As you watch over us through the night. Yes, sir. You came us out of home way last night. Touch us this morning with your finger of love. You woke us up. Start this out on an unchanged journey. We thank you, Lord, that you will close this front in our right mind. We are able to see, we are able to hear. Able to walk, able to talk, able to smell. Thank you, Lord. You put the food on the table this morning. Clothes on our back. And we have water to drink this morning. Yes. And Father, you brought us to your house. Yes. We came to worship you this morning in spirit. Children, 
You know that we fall short every day. And Father, I just pray this morning and the missing part of my congregation.
give some update about the upcoming banquet for Pastor Jackie's 22nd year that we're celebrating this week, the upcoming weekend. I hope y'all are excited. Anybody excited about it? Yeah. <laughs> so, as you know, we will be having a banquet, and it's at the Knight Pavilion. I have some landmarks for you all to remember to find the place. It is at 1925 South Main Street. Um, it is directly across the street from uh, a gas company, it's called Air Gas. The building is connected to the Goodwill Career Connections. And the building that they're in was previously called Mont Power Shop Incorporated. There is parking on both sides of the building. When you arrive, the doors are going to open at 5 o'clock, and there's going to be like a mix and mingle. There will be a photo booth, booth, so come looking good with your Sunday best on, and don't forget to say cheese. <laughs> there will be a list of names at the entrance, and if your name isn't on the list, you'll have to wait until everyone else is seated before entering the building. All guests should have already paid their $25 by now. If they haven't, I need you to see me today after church. We will not collect any funds at the venue. Yeah, I think I got everything. Oh, also when you enter the building, you will be giving a ticket. So make sure you hold on to that ticket because we're going to be giving some door prizes. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, you can see me out the church. So I just need everybody to show up for Pastor and Jackie. Show them some love. Let's celebrate. Sister, we're thankful for all of your efforts and uh, we look forward to having a festive time for all of you to come out and we share together because it's all about the fellowship. Uh, you know, it's, I know it's been, you've been here 22 years, but you know, it's never just about the pastor. And the pastor is only as good as the people that he pastors. And so we want to come together and have some fellowship and have a good time with the Lord that we can celebrate together, that we can share together, and that we can grow together. Amen. Amen. So we look forward to being able to do that. Let's give the Lord a hand, praise the Lord. Favor and how he continues to be with us. I want to lift, lift up Minister Watkins as she continues to recover at home and that God will continue to strengthen her. Uh, Sister Ramon is here. I always have a lot of you, sir. Thank God for her and her presence. And, uh, we lift up all those my mom, Gladys Bracken, and Deacon Ralph Brown, and his companion, Dorothy Clark. Let's continue to lift her up. Sister Annie May Price, continue. Oh, there she is. She's not here, no. God, let, let you look through the back there. Amen. I'm going to tell you this about Sister Clark. She's a woman of great faith. She is resilient and she is strong. And certainly we look forward. We're glad that you're back with us today. And we thank God because you look marvelous. And we thank God for that. Amen. Sister Billy Hutchinson, Sister Virginia Miller, and there are others on the list. Sister Helen Stone. And let us continue to keep them before the Lord. And certainly we. Praying God's strength for all those who, who are homebound. Uh, Sister Irene Corbin and Miss Tolly May, we pray her strength in the Lord. The Lord will continue to strengthen her as well. And we're just thankful for everything the Lord has done. How many are thankful for what Jesus has done? It's always good to see all of our young people and uh, all of you. And so we welcome you. We're glad to see you whenever we have opportunity to see you. Uh, certainly, we want to know. Let you know if there's anything that we can do to help you. Uh, certainly we're here to help you do that. Amen. But we'll be eternally grateful for God, to God for all that he's done and all that he has blessed us with. Amen. Amen. So we to the Lord. This time is tithes and offering time. It's time for us to give back to the Lord. According to how he has blessed you and I. You know, you can't be God given. No matter how you try. Oh, I know that's somebody's testimony. Yes, sir. 
Let us honor the Lord in our giving as you stand all over the place. And we give back to the Lord. Lord, to how he has blessed you and I. When he 
saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, yes. but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple day called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. God's word for God's people. If you would allow me just a few moments this morning, I want to talk to us from this subject. Something happened on the way to church. Something happened on the way to church. You hear from this fine choir?
this appointed time. Lord, we come not for a form or for fashion, but Lord, we come to declare a word about your goodness. And now, Lord, we pray right now that you would open up our hearts and our minds. Somebody here today, Lord, under the sound of my voice, may come to know you in a way they've not known you before. Somebody here today, their life might be changed. And now, Lord, we ask that you bring our wandering minds into focus as we turn our attention toward thee. And Lord, fill me with thy precious Holy Spirit and help me speak what only your Holy Spirit gives. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O Spirit of the living God, fresh on us once again. Take charge of all that we're about to say and do this hour. For we do it all in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Something happened on the way to church. In our lives, we made many pure to our worship edifice. And down through the years, we have had many occasions to darken the doors of God's church. And people come from all walks of life, from different places, from different backgrounds, and from, from different experiences, making their way to the Lord's house in order that they may worship the Lord. Here in the book of Acts in this third chapter two preachers one whose name is Peter and the other whose name is John. Because of their commitment to Christ Jesus they have always made their way to the temple at the ninth hour for prayer, which was three o'clock in the afternoon. You know how we are. We are people of habit. That when we make up our minds to do something, we do it the same way at the same time. And if anything gets in our way, sometimes we become unsettled. Because it takes us away from what is familiar to us. The Bible tells us that these preachers had, and I presume they did it every day, that at the ninth hour, at three o'clock in the afternoon, they would make their way to the temple, the temple of their church. And time and time again, they would always go there for prayer. But on this particular day, all the pilgrimages that Peter and John had made, there was a man who was lame who had caught their attention. Yes. How many times did we just take for granted going to church? We walk by and drive by the same things time and time again. And many times we don't even take time to pay attention to the things that we pass by on our way to church. I wish I had somebody. But I just believe that in life that God puts things in your pathway that you will encounter. And there will be a time in your life when you need to speak to the thing that's before you. And Peter and John, they make their way to the temple, as the text tells us. And that says in the second verse, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate. That's just before you go into the temple. Mm -hmm. In other words, he wasn't inside the temple, but he was outside the temple. Well, my beloved, sometimes in life there are people that we encounter on the church's doorstep before we go in. And I want you to know that your experience and your encounter with the Lord doesn't start when you walk through that door. But many times it starts when you're on your way. 
I wish I had somebody to pray for. Yeah. Here the text tells us some things about this man. It says that a man was lame from birth, which means he had been put in this condition from the time he was born. Secondly, he was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to be. Well, this wasn't just something that happened uh, every once in a while, but every day at three o'clock, this man was laid in front of the uh, in front of the temple at the gate of the temple, and all that he could beg in order that he could sustain himself and take care of who he was. There's some things that we need to realize, and there's something that we need about P and John. First and foremost, they were broke. They were preachers. And they had forsaken all for the gospel's message. And on this particular occasion, they got to the temple, and on this particular day, they noticed that this man would have been carried there daily. Perhaps there were many days that they had walked past this day. They didn't say anything to them. But on this particular day, they took notice of who we were. And I just believe that somewhere in Spirit. He looked at John. He said, you know, God has really blessed us. And we've been coming to this temple. In other words, we've been going to church every Sunday. And we walk by some folk on the way, and we haven't taken the time to even acknowledge the fact that there ain't nothing. Has there ever been anybody's testimony that you walk by some things and you notice some things, but you just have not taken the time to address the situation that's in front of you? So here they are. They see when they look at him, something in the spirit just resonates, and he can't help but address the man who's been laid by the gate called Beautiful for all these years. And he says to them, and when the man, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. And little did he know that they didn't have anything except the clothes on their back and the faith that was in their heart. And they asked him for money, and in verse 4, Peter looked straight at him, as did, as did John. And then Peter, something rose up in Peter, and Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. See, the first thing, that when you are on your way to church, that sometimes you may have to address some things. And what I like about this is when they said, look on us, in other words, they was telling the man to focus. You see, there are a whole lot of things in God's church and in all the way to church that are just out of focus. There's some folk on the outside who don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. And they're looking for something that they really don't want. In other words, we don't want you to know that what you want may not be the very thing that you need. So this man didn't ask him for money because he was hungry, perhaps. Or perhaps he knew that he needed to take care of some things in his life. But what he wanted what you and I have to understand is that we're going to come into contact with folk that are going to be asking for some things. They're going to be in positions of life. And, and in reality, God has put us here to show them a better way. I wish I had somebody praying for them. So he asked them for, one translation says, arms. Or, or he begged them for something that he might have something. And then they asked him to focus on them. And my beloved, sometimes uh, before we get to church, we need to refocus. We come out of all kinds of situations. We come from all types of things that are happening in our lives. And sometimes, even though we come to the church, we're like the lame man. He was on the outside of the church as opposed to being inside the church. And my beloved, there's some folk in the church who are on the inside, but are really still on the outside. In other words, let me put it for you like you can understand it. Your body is here with me. But your mind is on the other side of town. Somebody even knows what I'm talking about. But oftentimes we find ourselves here physically. But spiritually we're someplace else. I wish I had somebody pray. In other words, you came this morning with a whole lot on your mind. And you're not concerned about getting closer to the Lord because there's so many things that have captivated your mind that have taken you to think and the only thing that you're concerned about is just getting through the day. Oh, you always have folks like that. Just give me something that I can make it through the day. Just give me a fix in order that I can get through the situation that I'm going through. But in reality, you got to refocus sometimes in order for you to see what God has for you. Sometimes our judgment can be clouded by the word.
world. Sometimes our judgment can be clouded by people we come into contact with. Sometimes the weight of the world and the, and the things of this world can take us to a point in our lives when we're out of focus. In other words, they wanted his full undivided attention. And then they began to speak to his situation. You see, God puts us in position sometimes before we get here to speak to somebody's situation. And sometimes we think it's all about coming up in here, but sometimes it's how we prepare before we get here that determines what we do when we get here. If you want to make a difference in somebody's life, we have to refocus our attention on what the Lord is speaking. Telling us we need to do. This man had been laid there. He was born lame from birth. And had been laid in the temple gates daily. And he, he, had, he had engaged in a ritual of begging and asking people for arms or asking people for money in order he might sustain himself. In other words, he didn't know any better. And there's sometimes that you have to be careful how you judge me, what judgment you pass on. Because you're going to come into come contact with some folk who just don't know anybody. Wow. But then the Lord has placed in our hearts and in our spirit that we can speak to other people's situation in order that we can be of help to them. But the first thing that I want to encourage you to do, if you're one of those who've been on the outside, you have to get up and come on in the inside in order for the Lord to bless you, in order for the Lord to make a change in your life. He's, been, he's blessed somebody and brought somebody from a mighty long way. And you ought to want to change in your life. Somebody ought to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. In other words, you ought to be tired of going through the same old stuff time and time again. But don't let anybody want the Lord to bless you. And anybody here that wants the Lord to make a difference for you in your life. And anybody here that wants to be delivered from whatever's going on in your life. Anybody want to be healed? Anybody want to be changed? Anybody want to be made better? Waiting for somebody to do something for us. When in reality, all we have to do is have faith in God and do something for ourselves. Yes, Peter and John, they looked at the man and said, look at us. We don't have any silver and gold to give you. But it doesn't mean that we can't help you. I wish I had somebody pray. You see, you can't answer everything. You can't give everybody everything that they want or everything that they tell you that they need. But you need to learn how to give them what, something that will help them, something that will bless them, something that will encourage them, something that's life changing. So oftentimes, we often wonder what happens to folks. But I just believe that when I gave my life to the Lord, that I, yes, I played the game of going to church time and time again. I would go every Sunday like everybody else would. Sit there and listen to the but couldn't wait to get out. Everything that was said and everything that was done, I didn't always pay attention to it. You see, I was physically in the church. But spiritually, I was somewhere else. And we have to be careful when we, when we look at things and we look at situations because the Lord brings us uh, different things across our pathway in life because he's trying to tell us something about who we are. Yes, this man, what he wanted wasn't what he needed. And they looked at him and they told him to refocus. He was on the outside and needed to come inside. Yes. But then notice what they said to the man. They said, silver and gold, I have. But what I do, I have, I give you. And he goes on a step further. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Yeah. But then look at the text carefully. They didn't just command him. They reached down and picked the man up. Right. And while he was coming up, the Bible said that, it, that, it, that, it, that, it, that, his, that his legs and his feet gained strength. And he was able to walk. And he was able to give God praise because of what he done for us. What I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that sometimes we have to help. There's no thing to speak, but it's something altogether different when we're concerned about somebody else. And we extend ourselves in order to help them. Right. Yeah. Oftentimes we want to give folk advice. Right. But yet we don't want to help anybody. 
You tell them how to get to a place, but we don't want to give them a ride. You tell them about how what it feels like to, uh, to have food to eat and a roof over your head, but we won't want to help them. We don't want to give them the necessary means in order they can achieve what they need to achieve in life. Yeah, we've been coming to church, but we've been walking all over top of folks. We've been walking by people and we have not been concerned about them. But on this particular day, these two broke preachers decided that they didn't have any money in their pocket, but there was something they could do to help this man who had been sitting by the beautiful gate for all these years and brought in their daddy begging for something. Oh, well, they, they spoke to a situation. And oh, what a difference occurred in his life. Then it says here that he jumped to his feet and he began to walk. See, sometimes all people need is a little encouragement and a little help. A little prayer goes a long way, but prayer uh, it encompasses more than just opening your mouth. Sometimes it means opening up your heart and opening up your hands in order that you can do something for somebody else. Stop being so concerned about yourself and start being concerned about other people. And all just like the Lord bless you, you ought to be able to tell somebody, just like he made a way for me, he can make a way for you. <laughs> yes, they offered themselves. Uh, they reached down and they picked him up and then he came to his feet. He, he, his feet began to strength. He began to walk. And we noticed something else here. Uh, when he started walking, when he began to walk, the, the Bible says, then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. You see, when God does something for you, you can't help but tell him thank you. I wish I had somebody praying for you. He went into the temple courts, and I believe that he went because they invited him. And when we come to church, how many times did we invite over Lord? I wish I had somebody praying for you. We'll tell somebody, yeah, I said, you going to church? Yeah, I'm going to church. I was pumping gas this morning, and a man pulled up and he said, going to church today. I said, I sure am. I said, what about you? And he said, he didn't have my lottery ticket. So I said, it's okay, but uh, you know, I'm on my way to church. But he recognized the fact of where I was going and acknowledged the fact. And I in turn asked him about his faith. And then we began to talk about some things. And, and, and I think it opened up his eyes that he, that he saw some things for himself and realized that he himself needed to be something worship the Lord. See, the Lord doesn't put people in your pathway by accident. The Lord doesn't put people on your doorstep by accident. There are people on the outside of the church by accident, but we need to invite them to come in and the Lord they can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If we're going to make a difference in this community in which we live, we got to be embracing, we got to be loving, we got to be caring, we got to be, we, 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 we got to walk with Invite people in and make them feel comfortable about their experience in order to do that. Said he jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple court, walking and jumping and praising God. And the Bible tells us that when the people saw him walking, that when the people saw him jumping, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the, as the same man that he used to sit begging at the temple gate. And many of them wondered what happened to this man. What in the world took place in his life? Well, it's the same man that was begging. And every time he would come to the temple, he was sitting there just begging as people went by. But they were filled with wonder and amazement. And I began to ask the question, what happened to him? My beloved brothers and sisters, I want you to know that sometimes when you're on your way to church, the Lord goes before you. Yeah. And when the Lord goes before you, he's able to meet you right where you are. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? I came to Jesus just as I was. Was wounded, weary, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I wish I had somebody praying for me. But when I think about everything that the Lord has provided, it gives me great hope in knowing that when I'm on my way, that when the Lord goes before me, that, that something can happen. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that something happened 
on the way to church that changed my life and turned my life around. Something happened. A great change came over me. Is that anybody's testimony that you can tell somebody about what the Lord has done for you? Because he has done great things in your life. There was a preacher that told a story about a 12-year-old boy. And in the boy's family, his mama and his daddy were having difficulties. They did not know how they were going to pay the bills. They did not know how they were going to feed their three children. And then this 12-year-old boy saw that there was a revival going on down the street. He decided to go down to the revival. And while he was there, man, he was inspired by the word of God. So much so that when the pastor told it out, the story goes that he went back home with great excitement in his heart. And when he got to his home, he ran through the house. He went into his mama and daddy. He said, Mama and Daddy, do y'all know Andy? They looked around and said, We don't know no Andy. Ain't never heard of he went down the hall to his sister's room. He said, Sister, do you know Andy? She said, No, I don't know no Andy. You need to get out of here. He went down to his other brother's room and asked his brother, Do you know Andy? And his brother said, No, I ain't never heard of no Andy. His mom and daddy heard all of his Andy stuff going on. And they called a little boy in and said, What do you mean when you said, Do you know Andy? What in the world are you talking about? We don't know no Andy. We ain't never heard of no Andy. But then the little boy began to explain that when I went to revival, that the pastor told out the prayer, and he told us that Andy could help us. They said, what do you mean when you say Andy can help me? He said, Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me I am the Lord. That's the Andy that I'm talking about. And I want somebody to know today that regardless of what your situation looks like, help is on the way. Something happened on the way to church. My life was changed. My life was turned around. All of my help comes from the Lord. Do you know where your help comes from? I wish I had somebody praying with me. But when I think about what the Lord has done for me, when I think about where he's brought me from, when I think about the joy down in my soul, it lets me know that everything will be all right. Just keep on believing. Keep on being faithful. Hang on in there. Keep your hand in the Lord's hand. And after a while and by and by, everything's going to be all right. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Some help will come from somewhere. Some help will pick you up when you're down. Some help will turn your life around. Some help will make a way out of no way. Some help will heal your broken body. Some help will give you the joy down in your soul. Some help, and I don't know about you, but when I think about it, when I look back over my own life, I come to declare to you that all my help comes from the Lord. Do you know where your help comes from? Do you know who made a way out of no way in your life? Do you realize who it is that brought you from a mighty long way? Tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord thank you for what he's done for you. Because he's brought you from a mighty long way. I don't know about you, but something happened on the way to church. The Lord got on the inside. And when the Lord gets on the inside, Something will happen yeah. on the outside, yeah. on your way. Allow it to happen in your life. And the Lord can make a difference in your living. Yeah. Every day of your life ought to be a day that, that you give your best to the Lord. In every situation put before you, you have to realize that this is an opportunity. To live life in this place. Yeah. The Lord doesn't make any mistakes. Uh -huh. But on my way, on my way, so got happy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, on my way. Joy down in my soul. Yeah. Yeah. On my way. 
He put a song in my heart. On my way. Oh, he gave my footsteps. A little bit of pep. On my way. He made a difference in my life. God bless you. God keep you. Man, woman, boy, girl, you know that if you die today, that heaven won't be your home. We all will probably see you today. As you stand to your feet all over the place. Have this one today. That does not know Jesus. In the free part of sin. If you're here today and you've already made a decision for Christ, would you find yourself without a church home? You can come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism, whatever you desire. But don't put off the tomorrow what the Lord is telling you you need to do today. Is there one today? Anybody here today that needs prayer? There's plenty of room around y'all. Come and we can pray together.
Now, Lord, continue to be with us. Continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us as only you can do. For thee and all of the blessings we ask and we pray. It is in the marvelous, matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Our final benediction. Let the church.